What's going on everyone? It's your boy Sabby and today I'm bringing you guys a chapter review to chapter 89 of the beginning after the end. So this chapter was a pretty, nothing too crazy. It was a little bit more of a simple chapter. Um, So far what happened, I kind of, um, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but I kind of assumed what was going to, you know, transpire towards like the conversation with Good Sky and Arthur. But before we get started with that, if you guys are enjoying my reviews and the chapters itself, please remember to smash that like button. It takes less than a second and it means the world because you'll be supporting the channel itself and the um, series that I do cover on said channel. So if you guys could do that, that would be much appreciated. And remember, smash the sub button if you're not already part of the family. I make content like this frequently, so you will always get that heat. So this will be the best place to have a good time listening, watching, consuming the beginning after the end. So with that all out the way, remember, I do have a Patreon and Discord link in description below. Feel free to hit me up there on both of them if you're able to. Patreon it will be the other side of things where I'll be posting exclusive content for you guys, especially the um, beginning after the end reactions and solo love one that will all be on Patreon. If you're not a Patreon member and you're not able to make the times on Twitch, it behooves you to join Patreon and also on Discord. That's why I'll be notifying you guys all the time before I go live, when I go live, so you guys can tune in when I'm live about the series I do cover. It could be exclusives or either series I post on my um, my YouTube channel. You guys can know exactly when I'll be going live. So remember, join Discord so you guys could tune in if you want to join me live when I read whatever series I do read that day. So with that all out the way, let's get straight into the review. <laughs> All right, so starting off, um, Good Sky enters Art and Elijah's room. They're all looking spooked. Well, Elijah's looking kind of, you know, surprised. And Art's looking super serious for some odd reason. We don't know why at the moment. But we kind of find out why Art, um, no, why Elijah is looking the way he is. Because this is his first time actually meeting Good Sky face to face. It was actually kind of cool to see because I kind of forgot about that. Like, we know that Good Sky and, and Art you know, they're close, the you know, they're acquaintances more than just, you know, director and student. So it was interesting to see Eliza's reaction to Good Sky, just to remind us the prestige that Good Sky holds within the Academy. So that was really cool to see. And that was awesome because, you know, she came here with the purpose, Good Sky, but we didn't find that out towards the end. And it was great because right when they were looking at each other, Elijah knew like, yo, I, I gotta go. They're, they're going to be talking about something serious. So he offered to get them all drinks and good sky said okay that's fine thank you and they started talking and then art was just saying flat out that he wants to take um upper level classes to learn more about deviance and he was saying all this stuff that he wants to do and he was basically saying that he couldn't wait he's so eager to learn more about deviance plus deviant magic was not something in his old world so he's really really happy to like you know take the classes as soon as possible and Good Sky was just saying, okay, sure, sure. And she also said she would throw in a training facility too for him. And right when I read that, I'm like, yo, there gotta be a catch. There's no way she's just gonna say yes to all the offers and she doesn't have like an end game or like a, a whole alternative motive in mind. So yeah, it's, it's common sense. Like she had something cooking and she did. And then when Elijah came in, um, he, Elijah came in right when Art was taking everything in and told Good Sky, there must be a catch. And then Elijah was basically saying like, yo, you can't talk to the director like that. You can't, I can't believe that you think the director has alternative motives. And it's hella funny because right after he said that, she was like, oh, wait, I do have alternative motives. And then he was like, oh. And that was just, that's hilarious. She wasn't even like trying to hide it. She was being straight up. And now with that, she basically told Arthur like, you know, the student council, if they're the shield of the school, this year I created the swords. And guys, when I heard that, they were talking about a group called the Disciplinary Committee. And when I saw like the figures, it, it reminded me like the, if you guys remember, the um, behind the scenes of the actual season four that was, you know, they, they, that presented us, that was there before season four came out. They were going off on um, some of the design. If you guys remember, one of the designs of Curtis and Kathleen was them in all black uniform and there was like a sword by it. So I'm assuming if that is what we just got introduced, which is the disciplinary committee, they're part of it. 
and that's the uniform that Art received because right after that this guy threw over a uniform which had the same sword that was in the was that was in the sketch of the um behind the scenes so it looks like everything's out there now and art took this in and he was like yo i'm kind of annoyed that she just assumed that i was going to say yes because she already got an outfit tailored to arthur so she already came in knowing that he's going to say yeah and with that Arthur joined the disciplinary committee. We don't know what that entails besides this being the sword of the school. My assumption is he's going to be bodyguards. And the one thing, because before he accepted it, I should say, Art declined it. He was like saying, there's no way, this and that. I'd rather just not take the classes and, you know, Good Scott was throwing everything at him. And she basically said like, yo, like I give you like a, a training facility and was just talking about, you know, the disciplinary committee and how you could grow strong with them because they got chosen by strength. And when Art thought about that, you know what we're all thinking about? Chosen by strength. He was worried that maybe Lucas joined the disciplinary committee. But Good Sky paused him real quick and said, yo, don't worry. We figured that, you know, the Wings family will want Lucas to be in the disciplinary committee so bad. But I paused and said no, just to make sure that you would like to join. So that kind of rubbed Art the good, the right way, I'm pretty sure. Because we we figured that, you know, she knows about Note and Lucas's situation as a venture. She's a good guy, she must know for sure. So, you know, Art joins. And another side note, too, that... We find out that um, Good Sky notices that Art feels a little bit different, and he is not the only one that Sylvie is not the only one that changed. Art is changing as well, and she notices that he, she could only sense his um, Earth and Wind magic, and she notices the bracelet on his arm that you know is what's stopping it. And then he was trying to wait for the right time to tell her, but you know she's here now, so now she knows. So that was kind of cool to find out that she's really observant about you knowing like Art is trying to play a certain role. And it sucks for her because she can't, you know, go around and, you know, show off her quad elementor protege, which kind of caught me off guard because I'm like, protege? Like, that's Veron's protege more than anyone else's at the moment, at the moment. Not yours. Like, come on, let's be honest. You're, um, to size your protege. But anyway, I digress. That was just a small thing I want to talk about. Also, right before that got decided and, you know, Good Sky leaves the room, she said, all right, you know, you should make up with Tasaya, this student council president, because, you know, that's your good childhood friend. She said it. And I was like, yo, what? And then we see Elijah's face turns to complete stone because I just remember well, Elijah didn't know because Art never told Elijah that, yo, that's how I know Tasaya. He just kept it to himself. So it was like crazy. He was like, you're Tasaya's childhood friend like what how, how is this even possible which hey i'll be the same way too because he knows we see that kathleen glitter has some for him obviously and now out from another freaking um area has connections with art and let alone just a connection they're childhood friends like so i could understand elijah's like you know mind blownness right now so that was just funny to see and then after that like he was just walking and she he was like saying like yeah like i mean this is what it is and then he was like saying dang both princesses and everything that what are you gonna flirt with next gods and he was like hey i never flirted with any of them and then he was like well that makes it even worse and he was like saying well you know back in the day i also had a childhood friend too and then we see literally i'm not trying to be rude but the most grotesque woman that we've seen thus far in the series i'm i'm assuming it's a, a dwarf girl and it was just horrendous man i'm not even capping she was literally it was tough to see and i'm just assuming most um dwarf girls are like that so that shows us why maybe maybe that is why elijah is so infatuated with finding a girl in cyrus academy because that was like his number one motive so far and you know making a name for himself but that is kind of secondary after finding how high strung he is to find you know a second half <laughs> so that was kind of cool to see but you know they go to the school they're in the cafeteria now they're walking towards it and you know their students are eating obviously so while they're walking in the cafe they're getting lunch and then art was like saying get off of me weirdo and we see literally elijah rubbing his body against art asking him like yo give me some of your freaking sexiness or some some attractiveness like it was weird it was like really sus to be honest it was like probably the most sus scene in season four no cap at all 
But you know, like Art was just saying, like, get the fuck away from me. <laughs> and he, like walked away. So that was hella funny. And after that, while they're walking to, you know, eat food, we see there's a lot of glares at Art specifically i thought it was art and elijah at first but it was mainly at art and then we noticed that the rumors about art we know with the scuffle earlier has all went around the school and that's what they're glaring at and you know we're assuming that art might be worried or like elijah might be worried for his friend but literally we see art moving his hair back like yo i'm actually this popular already like <laughs> this guy what I thought you're I thought you're a grown man and a kid. Why are you worried about being popular like this? Like it was I think they just do that in there. I highly doubt that's gonna be in the light novel. I think that was just for comedy of relief to per se. I'm just being honest. But it was like a funny scene to see in itself. So they're eating lunch and then we see a group of uh, three people and I'm assuming they're all battle mages is not um stated that they're all battle mages but the way they hold themselves and the way, what they were saying makes it seem like they are battle mages and the dude that was like the leader is from like the Rampore family and was basically talking to elijah saying hey i'm reaching my hand out to you so you won't have to eat with you know trash right next to you type shit like calling arthur trash mind you guys arthur <laughs> and that was just funny to see and then we didn't know if elijah was gonna go with them or not but we see like <laughs> elijah's making fun of him saying like yo the Ramp Poo family, like Ramp Poop family. And then we see Arthur laughing, saying like, yo, I don't think a prestigious family would be named after feces. And they're just all cracking up. And then we see like, you know, the Ramp Poor heir getting all pissed off saying, I can't believe you're gonna dis disrespect royalty. Like I offered my hand to you and you're just gonna spit on my face. And then he's like, yo, why would I go on your side when you, you know, your dog and my best friend. And even what the student pre council president said, we're not fighting anymore. There should be no discrimination. And then the Rampart dude was basically saying, yo, that's all politics and just for appearances. This is reality, which makes good sense because I mean, no matter what you say, shit's not going to change just like in the real world people want to stop racism and like they do all this stuff but at the end of the day there's going to be that group of people that are still racist no matter what you say to them their upbringing how they were grown up everything about them that's not going to change after just one speech that it's not it's sad to say but that's reality with um societies in stories and in real life so when i heard that i'm like yo there's okay come on that's <laughs> he's right about that even though he's wrong even though I hate to say that he's right about that, it is he is right. Like it's just for appearances, and hopefully the greater few that's not so tied in their beliefs will be better. And then you know the people that are not, the disciplinary committee could you know handle it because if they really thought that could help, they wouldn't be a disciplinary committee because they will just have hope that every kid will you know be open to less discrimination. But that's not reality. Hence why there's a disciplinary committee. That, I might make a video about that. And like discrimination for another day. If you guys want to see that, um, let me know in the comment section below too. But um, yeah, I just I just had to say that because it shows like even in the series that they're preparing for the worst, even though they're looking so you know good about not dealing with this right now. So you know they they talk about it and then Art, not Art, um, the Rampart kid was basically telling Elijah, like, yo, I'll show you the difference between me and Trash and what you're standing next to, and tries to punch Art, and then. Art deflects it. We didn't even see him deflect it. It was like super fast. And then dude was like, yo, like he deflected it. I didn't see him throw a punch. This must be a fluke. And he tries to do it again. And then right when he tries to punch him again, Elijah steps up and stops him. And he was like right in front. And then Art's thinking like, I probably could get away with magic if I would, you know, stopped it. But Elijah, and he's protecting our boy Art, which is awesome because that's a bond I do not want to get broken. Like they're, they're good buds. They're good buds. So um, hopefully... They stay strong as hell, and that was cool to see. But towards the end, we see vines out of everywhere going after the Rampore kid. And I'm assuming, bro, this reminds me of the Elder Beast Guardian no, no cap because it looks so similar. But with that being said, since Tasai is going to get... I'm just going to say she's going to get the, the, the core. It's going to be easy to us to put together like yo it'll be perfect and that is to that has the vines but we don't know yet is it wasn't said yet that Taziah is the one that you know produced those vines it's just assumptions but still if it's not Taziah I think it'll be a good chance to show someone from the disciplinary committee that is an elf 
that knows I use plant magic to introduce like, hey, this is my name. This is, I'm from the disciplinary committee. Nice to meet you. That would be kind of cool if that's the case. So either or it will work perfectly for me. But if I had to put my money on something, I would say it's Tessiah. It's Tessai. She's a student council president. She is the shield. So, hey, I think that's the case. Hopefully it's Tessai. If it's not, I hope it's the latter. So if you guys enjoyed this review, please let me know in the comment section below too. And let me know what you would rate the chapter. Personally, I'll say the rating for this video, I'll probably just say seven. It wasn't too crazy at all. It wasn't a nothing crazy. I hate the fucking cliffhanger that we get. Like, they're so good at like, you know, making these cliffhangers. I feel like they're just laughing at me behind my back. But anyway, yo, the cliffhanger was heavy. We didn't get to see who, you know, produced those vines, but it was awesome to get the introduction of the disciplinary committee. That was great. That was great. But still a seven for me because nothing too crazy. It was just like, you know, more like building up what's going to happen. Nothing crazy, nothing big happened at all. We didn't get any introduction about like the people in there, you know, so it, it was, it was whatever. But, um, this is a seven for me. Let me know how you got. Let me know how you guys feel about the chapter in the description below, and what would you guys rate it, and what you guys look forward to in the next chapter of the begin after the end, chapter ninety. So without all out the way, remember to like the video and also sub to the channel if you're not already part of the family. I make content like this frequently, so you always get that dose of heat. And without all out the way, I hope you guys all have a blessed day. Savvy signing out.